successfully implement or enhance this meaningful recognition for your nurses and nurse-led teams in the ambulatory setting. Um, as many of you may know, my family and I started this foundation uh, 23 years ago after my husband, Patrick Barnes, died from complications of the autoimmune disease, ITP. And um, here are a few photos of us on the left, Patrick. In the middle, Patrick and I and our daughter, Riley, who was just six weeks old when he got sick and three months old when he passed away. And then on the right, uh, Pat's dad, Mark, and stepmom, Bonnie, who have been instrumental in the growth of the Daisy Foundation. So after Pat died, we really were searching for a way to turn our grief into something positive. But what was positive about our experience? We kept coming back to conversations about his nurses. We were completely awestruck by the care and compassion that his nurses brought not only to Pat, but to us as a family. And that's really when we had our aha moment. Let's thank his nurses in a very public way. And so DAISY was born, DAISY being an acronym for diseases attacking the immune system, as it ties back to the condition that Pat had, and with it, the DAISY Award for Extraordinary Nurses. So for 23 years, we have been honoring extraordinary nurses around the world with the DAISY Award. There are now over 5,800 healthcare organizations and schools of nursing who are DAISY partners. Um, and as many of you know, patient and family gratitude for a nurse's extraordinary compassionate care is the most meaningful way to thank, uh, to thank a nurse. So very meaningful for them to receive that feedback. And that's really the core of our recognition program. Uh, we are continually surprised every day how many healthcare organizations and schools of nursing have learned about DAISY and the work that we do. Uh, we are so excited that over 200,000 nurses have received the DAISY Award, but the number that really astounds us is that over two and a half million times a patient, a patient's family, or a colleague has taken the time to thank a nurse and write a nomination for the DAISY Award. Um, DAISY is widely supported by a number of professional nursing organizations, including your own. Um, these include state associations, as well as national and international associations. And all of these associations know the value of recognizing the extraordinary compassionate work of nurses. And so we're so thankful for this collaboration uh, in helping advance each other's missions. And this is a perfect example of, of a collaboration. So it's important to note that DAISY is evidence-based. It's a form of meaningful recognition. It has been used as a proxy for meaningful recognition in research studies. And we have over a 23 year history of success in engaging nurses in their work, which has provided insights into successful programs of nurse recognition. So as a form of meaningful recognition, DAISY can impact your organization in three areas healthy work environment, nurse engagement and the nurse experience, and the patient and family experience. There are numerous research studies that support this, and you can find more detail on our website, but here I'll just give you an overarching example of uh, this impact. Meaningful recognition is one of the six standards of a healthy work environment as outlined by the American Association of Critical Care Nurses and it contributes to a healthy work environment by focusing on all the right that is going on in an organization versus all of the wrong. Uh, meaningful recognition reminds nurses why they became nurses to begin with as expressed through nomination stories of extraordinary compassion and care. Meaningful recognition demonstrates your mission and vision through these daisy stories of care and the award builds in a celebration of the team. Second, having meaningful recognition in place impacts nurse engagement and the nurse experience. DAISY nurses are role models of compassionate care and DAISY nominees and honorees may have lower compassion fatigue and higher compassion satisfaction levels. As we know, engaged nurses are more satisfied and resilient, all of which contributes to higher retention. And meaningful recognition of nurses' actions acts as a mirror of the importance of their contributions. This reflected impact energizes resilience and overall well-being of the nurse and those that they come into contact with. Nursing is a profession where you make a living of loving. 
And third, how meaningful recognition impacts the patient and family experience. As I said before, over two and a half million nominations have been written to express gratitude to nurses. And those nomination stories capture the voice of the patient and family. They want to tell their story and they want to thank their nurse. And in one study conducted, patients realized as a result of being able to nominate their nurse and communicate their gratitude in this way, that this particular healthcare organization was serious about patient and family-centered care. Additionally, patients and families felt connected to that organization through the nomination and recognition of their nurse, which may contribute to loyalty for the organization and increased likelihood as a healthcare organization of choice. And so now, again, any questions before, I'm gonna turn this over to my sister-in-law, Melissa, who will discuss ways to uh, maximize your DAISY program if you already have it in place, or to talk a little bit about how you could get started with DAISY if you're not currently a partner. So thank you, and Melissa, it's all yours. Unmute. Thank you, Tina. The truth is, is when my family started the DAISY Foundation, they were very much focused on hospital settings. Well, in the last 23 years, we realized nurses work in a ton of different environments and locations and settings, doing all kinds of extraordinary compassionate care work with patients and families where they are at. And this includes, of course, outpatient clinics, home health, surgery centers, urgent care, freestanding ERs, even telephone, which is amazing, all of the different places you can find nurses. And so when you have access into our resource center, which I hope those who are DAISY partners know that you can go in and find our materials, do know that it may feel like it is a little bit hospital bent, but the truth is, is we've worked very hard on trying to make these materials and templates available to you so that they can fit all kinds of settings. And really, I think one of the most important things that we want to share with you is real life examples of how the DAISY Award Program can live and breathe in an ambulatory setting. And I can think of no one better than the HCA Ambulatory Surgery Centers who have done a fantastic job over the last couple of years in creating awareness, collecting nominations, and in celebrating their nominees and their honorees. So it's with great pleasure that I'd like to introduce to you Sharon Eckler, who is, of course, the nursing uh, VP there at the Surgery Center. Sharon, please take it away. Thank you so much, Melissa and Tina. I feel like I know Patrick personally with as many times as we have had uh, the blessing of sharing his story, what you have created so that we can recognize nurses from across the country. Um, I would love to introduce uh, two of our partners here, Stephanie Landry, who is our VP of Experience in April, uh, Noldi, who is uh, an assistant here, but truly our right brain, our workhorse. Uh, she has been absolutely incredible in helping us carry this out. Um, Stephanie, do you mind sharing our presentation? And just want to kick things off and hand it over to them. Um, Stephanie's going to present just a little bit for us uh, and just share with you uh, where we've come. It has been about a two and a half year journey, but it's been an incredible one. So um, next slide, I just want to share a little bit about our statistics. We are... Um, 150 ambulatory care centers strong in 16 states, as you see there, and over 40 markets. So to be able to deploy a recognition program that um, was meaningful and that maintained its um, 
uh, drive uh, has been a challenge, but at the same time, it has been incredibly rewarding. Uh, there you see just quickly uh, 16 states and 42 markets, 152 centers, um, 3,300 uh, physician partners we are syndicated. So um, that's important because some of our recognitions um, and definitely our celebrations include our physician partners. Um, there's our FTE count and 819,000 surgeries on an annual basis. And those are opportunities to interact with patients and their families. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Stephanie Landry, uh, who runs our DAISY committee and will share with you what our, who is involved with our DAISY committee and what they do and how we're able to um, celebrate uh, so many times uh, with the DAISY Foundation. Stephanie. Perfect, thank you so much for that, Sharon. So this is our DAISY committee. Um, we are very thankful to have numerous colleagues from across the surgery division participate in our DAISY committee. This helps ensure that we have the voice of everyone in the field as well and that we are meeting their needs, uh, making sure they have all of the tools and resources to really promote the program. Um, and this, this committee has just been uh, so important in the success of our program. I will say. We, of course, are led by Dr. Sharon Eichler, our Division Chief Nursing Executive. It really was Sharon that brought this to our division, um, having worked many, many years in our hospitals, understanding the value and importance of a really formal recognition program that, um, as Tina and Melissa already shared, um, coming directly from patients, there really is no better recognition than that that is coming directly from our patients. Also, nominations from fellow coworkers and from our physicians as well. Um, it's just, it's so heartwarming. It brings people back to purpose. Um, and it's just, it's a wonderful way to acknowledge and recognize the efforts of, of our entire team. One of the things that we think has made our program very successful is when we launch our program and whenever we bring on a new surgery center, we start by sending them a marketing toolkit. And it includes posters that can be posted in lobbies, restrooms, what have you. We also have the paper nomination forms um, that we share. There's also um, documents with the QR code. One of the things that I think has really helped us quite a bit is the business card. Um, this It's a perfect size to attach to discharge paperwork. We also send a thank you card to each of our patients after we um, have the opportunity to care for them. And so this is a great piece that we can include in those thank you cards as well. And then it has that QR code um, directly there to make it very easy for patients to um, send in nominations that way. We do also have the B Award, which complements the DAISY Award. This was a great way to bring in that, of course, healthcare is a team sport, and we wanted to make sure we have nomination a nomination process for our patient care partners as well. And so we do the same thing with our B Award, that being exceptional every day. Um, and again, we send a marketing kit with that. And then we recently, as of last year, also implemented the DAISY Team Award. And this was a great addition to our program as well. Um, this, of course, is an annual award, so a little bit different than the DAISY Award, which is that ongoing um, process. But we received some amazing nominations that really acknowledged a team coming together um, to support fellow colleagues, to support a community initiative, um, and ultimately to support our patients as well. Um, so same thing with this, we do send out information for all of our centers so that um, we try to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to nominate and really know and understand this program that's available to them. We also make sure that materials are posted both in patient facing areas and then also in areas of the facility where our colleagues and our physicians are, are present uh, frequently as well. This way, again, it helps generate those nominations, not only from our patients, 
but also from fellow colleagues and physicians as well. Um, so you can see some examples on the screen here on the left. Um, this is an end table in one of our lobbies. And again, we have those business cards that are easy to grab and take that have the QR code as well as the paper nomination form. Um, this middle picture is an example of a workspace um, where physicians and colleagues access routinely. And then the consult room is another place where we're bringing families back to have those conversations about how patients are doing. Um, and so we have information about the award, the QR code is there, and then also those patient nomination forms are very uh, quick and easy to grab and take with them. We will acknowledge there is some work that's involved in this program, and I think that's really important just to have a good understanding. First and foremost, we have support all the way up to our division president for this initiative, and I think that coupled with um, Dr. Eichler's support of the program has really ensured the success of this, this program. That sets the tone that um, we want to make sure all of our leaders are making sure these materials are available in all of our facilities, that all of our colleagues are aware of this program, and that we're really promoting it. April Noldy, I cannot say enough good things about her and what she has done to really organize this process um, and make sure that we maintain the integrity of the program, um, but can also administer it as efficiently as possible. Um, so she did a great job of kind of outlining for us what it takes from her standpoint each month um, to really make sure that this program is successful. We receive more than 200 nominations every single month. So again, going back to those numbers that Tina shared, those, you know, 2.5 million acknowledgements of, of wonderful patient care, it's just, it's astounding. And so we're thankful that we're contributing to that number as well. Um, so there is a ton of recognition happening across our division. Um, April indicated it takes about 15 hours each month to go through those nominations. Of course, this is an anonymous process. So part of what April is doing is making sure we have all of the information about who is being nominated, what facility they're at, things along those lines. Um, of course, that information is all blinded before it goes to our committee for scoring. We have a rubric that our committee members complete. So when they review the nomination, they then score it based on, on the associated rubric. And then that spreadsheet is sent back to April. She compiles all of the, the committee scores and then ultimately determines who the honorees are for each month. Every person that is nominated receives a card and also a DAISY pin. Um, and so that process takes about eight hours each month to make sure, again, everyone's receiving that card and pin. And then, of course, just the logistics of, um, you know, stuffing envelopes, creating labels, mailing them out, those types of things. Another really important component is tracking those nominations that are coming in because there is also the multi-nominee pin. And I will tell you, we have colleagues that they are working hard because they they see the value in this uh, this uh, recognition program, and so it is it is a badge of honor when they receive that multi-nominee pin. Um, and so April does a phenomenal job of tracking all that and making sure we're accounting for that as well. And then April does a really good job of working with our center leaders once the honoree is selected to make sure that we have a really great celebration. We make this a very big deal across our division. Um, that process takes about four hours each month. Um, it includes a pre-celebration call with facility leadership really to solidify that date, make sure the facility has everything they need, April coordinates, making sure we have the treats. Of course, we have cinnamon rolls for the Daisy Award. Um, we also use honey buns for our B Award. And then uh, we selected the Snickerdoodle, another cinnamon treat for our Daisy Team Award. Um, and so April coordinates, making sure that those are ordered and sent to the facilities. And then of course, April coordinates sending the banner, um, the um, sculpture, the uh, certificate, all of those things that go along with that. And then one really important piece, because we are spread out across the country, unfortunately, it's just not possible for everyone to be present in person. And so we actually have a WebEx call that April schedules, and basically we are live streaming the celebration. So leaders and colleagues from across our division 
can sign into that WebEx and view the celebration, um, which is great. It just provides that additional support to the honoree. Um, and then again, it's great for word of mouth as well. So everyone can see what those, those celebrations look like. And then we do post those video recordings to our intranet um, so that anyone that's not able to participate live can still go back and, and see those celebrations. We wanted to share just a few photos. Um, every center makes the celebration very unique and personalized. Um, so you can see different balloon banners that folks um, have utilized. Of course, we have the traveling banner that goes around. Um, in addition to the cinnamon rolls, the our staff is just amazing. And we have had several homemade treats that have been included in the celebrations as well. Um, really some very talented colleagues that have made cupcakes and cookies um, and cake pops and things along those lines to share in addition to, to those cinnamon treats. To, again, really personalizes the celebration. These are some images of one of our most recent celebrations. We actually had a first in our division where we had um, a DAISY Award winner and a B Award winner at the same facility. Um, so again, quite impressive because these nominations, they are blinded. So when they're going to the committee, we don't know um, who's being nominated or what facility they are at. Um, so this is quite an amazing um, amazing acknowledgement for one of our, our facilities in the Austin area. Um, but you can see just being able to recognize these colleagues, we strive to make sure we have a lot of colleagues at the facility in person. You can see up here in the corner, Dr. Eichler was actually able to travel to this facility to be there to support them as well. Um, and then of course we had it streaming across WebEx as well. Um, so really just a nice opportunity to celebrate. I will also know we strive very hard to have the person who nominated the individual participate in the celebration. Um, you know, we had a recent celebration where the patient wasn't able to physically be there, but she called in. And so she was able to share her story um, so that everyone in the room could hear how much she valued and appreciated. Um, she noted that her nurse uh, made her feel loved, made her feel safe, um, and just hearing those words directly from the patient, it honestly just gives you chills. Um, and again, just a great way to just further emphasize the importance of, of this recognition by including patients and their families in those celebrations whenever we can. We also make sure to uh, communicate so all of our colleagues across the division know about these awards. Um, on the left here is uh, an image of our intranet page, our Atlas Connect site. So we do, again, we post all of our celebrations so that folks can view those um, and then are routinely changing out com content just to make sure folks have easy access to all of the materials. And then we also have our Clinical Connections newsletter um, that is sent out every month as well. And we do highlight our DAISY, um, our DAISY Award, our B Award, and then our DAISY Team Award honorees in this, this newsletter as well. It's just another opportunity to share photos and images and really share those stories. So our colleagues have multiple ways of hearing about all of what the wonderful care that's being given. We included our contact information here. Uh, would certainly welcome if anyone has questions or anything we can do to help support or provide ideas, we're, we're more than happy to. As I noted, April is, she is the key to our success and um, is a, a wealth of knowledge and information in terms of how we administer the program and whatnot. Um, but certainly myself and Dr. Eichler are also more than happy to um, answer any questions or provide any support we can. Um, so with that, if there are questions or Sharon, if there's anything you wanted to add. I just want to say thank you again to Tina. Um, uh, thank you for sharing um, and turning something, a loss, into such an incredible recognition experience and sharing it amongst so many healthcare organizations. Incredibly important. And we thank you so very much. Melissa, your continued partnership is um, incredible. We entertain any questions you may have and definitely will share anything that we possibly can um, so that you can take your celebrations to the next level or engage in the celebration yourself. Tina, Melissa. Oh, you're on mute, Melissa. 
Thank you. Thank you all so much. I have to say that when I saw you received over a thousand nominations in just the first couple of months of launching your date award program, I was so amazed. And I, as you know, immediately reached out and wanted to take all of your best practices of how you were successful. And what I would really love to know is, um, because you've only ha you've had the program now for a little over a year, you have done a fabulous job of creating the awareness and putting the time in that's necessary to really be successful to get those over 200 nominations a month. I am curious if you have seen an impact on your nurses with your exceptional execution of the program. Stephanie, I'll let you speak to that. You've got all of our statistics and definitely um, are the expert at our experience side, not just only our, our nurses, but our physicians and our patients as well, Melissa. Uh, I think that uh, as I uh, get out and travel and hear from the leadership and also are able to join a few of the celebrations, uh, one of them comes to mind. And when we were celebrating, one of the patient's families came up to me and said, um, is there any way I can have that nurse you're celebrating as uh, the one taking care of, uh, it, was a, it was a brother at that time. And so I just, I think it speaks, the banners as well, speak to the confidence in the healthcare providers and the care. I think from the employee's perspective, I have heard thank you, thank you, thank you a million times. So uh, I think they're honored by the recognition, uh, especially in its national format with our platform. Uh, Stephanie, what would you add to that, ma'am? Yeah, I think we've certainly seen um, some very positive improvement when you look at our overall employee engagement. Um, we do an annual survey. Uh, we actually do it twice a year, I should say. Um, we specifically ask a question about recognition, and we have seen some amazing comments um, from our colleagues across the ASD about how much they value and appreciate having the opportunity to recognize each other in this way and then also receive that recognition. And as Sharon noted, when there is an honoree in a facility, the energy that you feel, and it is, it is long lasting. It is not just, you know, the day of the celebration, you know, everything is wonderful and then, um, you know, no residual effect. It, it is very long lasting amongst our colleagues when they receive that type of recognition. Um, our nurses proudly display their daisy pins um, it's, it's amazing to walk into a facility when you see colleagues that have multiple um, pins on their badge display, just the level of pride, you can really feel it. And I absolutely think we're seeing in the data, of course, we're seeing it in our employee engagement data, of course, from our patient experience standpoint as well, it's reinforcing those behaviors that are so important to our patients. Um, and nurses, as a general rule, are just very good at being caring and compassionate. Um, but when you see that reinforced through nominations, uh, it makes a, a significant impact um, in the overall experience of all of our patients because it's constantly at the top of everyone's mind why we're here um, and that at the center of everything we do are our patients. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Well, I can't thank Sharon, Stephanie, April, I can't not thank you enough for showcasing and sharing with us your best practice practices. The truth is you answered the most important questions. How will patients and families know they can say thank you to their nurse and how will they remember the nurse's name? You can apply this to anywhere that a nurse is delivering care. If you can answer those two questions, you will receive nominations from patients and families, no matter the setting. Now, there are different strategies for answering those two questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. And I am going to share uh, some of the great ways that facilities can also create awareness. And many of these you heard Stephanie and her team have implemented and you saw those pictures. So really just 
I love the fact that Stephanie had sent out to each individual location the starter kit. I think that that is such an essential way of making sure that every clinic has the same setting and is able to support that. Uh, the thank you cards, evaluations, patient satisfaction comments, all of those things, it does not have to be written on a DAISY nomination form to be considered for your DAISY award program. And of course, a QR code and electronic nomination form is a wonderful, easy way for a central DAISY coordinator to collect nominations from multiple um, locations. And of course, including that all important nurse's name. I also love the fact that Stephanie and her team send out reminders to the whole internal team that they too can nominate a nurse when they catch them in the act of compassionate care. And this is exceptionally important, especially important when you are in a physician dominated primary care type of outpatient clinic where a lot of times the patient family may not see all of the hard work that a nurse puts in to making sure that that patient is really well taken care of. And great examples of this are the nurse who doesn't give up after the first phone call, but continually pursues in order to provide that patient with legendary care, whether it be different pharmacies to get medication that's needed before a trip, whether it be with the patient themselves to make sure that they come in for that follow-up. There's so much that nurses do behind the scenes that the team knows that the patient may not. And that certainly should be included with your DAISY award program. Using nomination forms that have a story, a sample story, is so essential, again, especially I think in ambulatory settings where people aren't really sure, well, what do you mean she delivered compassionate care? Now, you do not have to use our sample story. If you want, you can reach out to myself or anyone on our team to provide you with an ambulatory sample story that matches the setting that you practice in. Um, or you can kind of create your own based off of the feedback that you have perhaps received in the past from your own patients and families. So just kind of let people know, what are you looking for when you say nominate or thank your nurse? That is a great way to get people's minds going and they're able then to verbalize how that nurse made them feel. Certainly you can have nomination collection boxes ensuring that there's big signage around those. If you have a location that is um, that people go to, online nomination forms going electronic, diverting everyone to your website is a great way to also increase website visibility. Um, you can create your own electronic nomination form, or we can certainly provide you with an electronic nomination form that you can use uh, to collect those nominations. And again, on your internet to also include that as an important place uh, to encourage. I would also like to say writing a letter to the physicians that work in your organization, because oftentimes physicians, they may not um, have a way or an awareness of what you are doing in the nursing world. And so inviting them via a letter, letting them know that you participate in this program and to ask them to catch a nurse in the act of compassionate care, you can then send that letter off to that physician to let them know. Having signage, um, as you saw, Stephanie and her team did a great job of creating awareness where patients and families, they knew that there was an opportunity to thank a nurse or a staff member. And there's lots of different ways to do that on, in our resource center. We have all the templates. And if you happen to work in a building with an elevator, 
hey, that's a great way to create awareness too. That's a lot of fun. These business cards are really a fantastic tool. When you think about home health, when you think about uh, some of these ambulatory settings in the ER, for example, um, when they you leave paperwork or the patient leaves with patient with paperwork, it's so great to just attach a card that lets them know reminds them what that nurse's name was in urgent care, in ER settings, in home health settings, so that they can say, yes, I do want to say thank you. It's really scary to go into an ER and you helped me through that experience. Speaking of helping patients, you know, in home health, um, in uh, phone calls, um, when you are doing telehealth, there are oftentimes managers or patient experience experts or other people who are contacting and connecting with the patient to ask, how is your nurse? How, how, how did the, the nursing care go for you? This is a great opportunity to train the people who are collecting these types of patient evaluations to listen for a story and to be able to say, oh, would you like to use this as a nomination for your nurse for an award? You do, do you give me permission? Okay, check mark. Now that is a DAISY nomination story. So definitely include people that are taking care of those evaluations in those different There's no water in what room? There's no water uh, in the training room. And there is, of course, again, uh, urgent care. Oh, the sink doesn't uh, work. Discharge. <laughs> you may want to mute. Uh, and in the discharge paperwork, anytime you have paperwork that goes with that patient, you should also be including a nomination form, an electronic nomination form, a business card, something in there that allows the patient family to know that they too can say thank you to their nurse. Melissa, if I can just jump in real quick, just because I, I heard this term um, at the, the AAACN conference. Um, I think you call it AVS, the after visit summary. And we had some people who were putting uh, uh, their URL or QR code on the after visit summary uh, about being able to nominate. Which is phenomenal. So before we move into the next um, session, does anybody that is on the call have any questions or particular challenges that you might have in your setting um, that you think are unique or that you would love for some problem solving to happen in your setting? It's a quiet audience today. That's okay. It's good because you have food for thought, right? I think I, I'll, Melissa, I'll jump in too and just bring this up as a topic, especially since we're recording this and others uh, that might view it later, it might be applicable. But I know that, you know, many times in, in the, the situation with um, HCA, you guys are, I believe, freestanding clinics. But a lot of times we have partners who it's a bigger hospital system and they everyone's eligible, but their ambulatory areas and their clinics, um, you know, may not be getting the nominations or they, they may be getting nominations, but are not selected because they're up against, uh, you know, other areas of the hospital. So, um, you know, sometimes if it's, if that's the situation, a lot of times it, it can work and it's successful, but if you're in that situation and, and you feel like, well, we're not getting representation or we never are selected uh, as an honoree, you may want to consider having your own DAISY program with your own criteria. Um, that focuses in on that on that area. Great, absolutely. And we have several um, several organizations that run their ambulatory separate from their hospital. The key is is that you want to then group all of that, uh, all of those clinics, all of those ambulatory settings, transfusion, infusion, so on, so that you have a strong pool of nurses to celebrate. 
Great. So growing your committee, as Stephanie pointed out, it does take a large group to uh, really be successful with your DAISY award program. So in addition to what Stephanie offered as ideas for you to add to your committee, we have a few as well. If you have board members, foundation representatives, doctor, physician-led organizations where you want to invite uh, one of them to the selection committee, that's a great way to uh, have that inclusivity. Patient experience should definitely be part of your DAISY award program. If you have a patient, uh, family advocate, anyone, uh, even a patient that's very involved with your organization, that's a great person to include. Somebody from your HR department. If you have nurse recruiters in your organization, those are wonderful people to include because they should be taking the stories of how your nurses are impacting patients and families and the feedback that they are receiving and using that at the job fair, using that at the local high school, using that at the colleges to inspire that next generation of nurses. A marketing department, extremely important to include with your DAISY award program, as well as retired nurses to help assist. Um, they can organize the nominations like April has done for HCA uh, Ambulatory Surgery Centers. Um, and it's a great way to really track those who receive nomination after nomination. It really highlights who in your organization might be the person that you want to tap for that new hire to shadow. And of course, celebrating your nominees is equally important. I love the way that Stephanie talked about how they ensure that every nurse receives a copy of their nomination, a thank you card acknowledgement from leadership, and their nominee pin that obviously they wear with pride. And it's such a great way to spread organization throughout, uh, spread recognition throughout your organization. And as mentioned, it's a great way to also highlight those nurses who just received nomination after nomination, really saying, wow, you understand not only the science of an excellent nurse, but the art of compassionate care as well. Having a great crowd for your DAISY Award presentation to truly make it special. This includes inviting your senior leadership, your doctors, um, other uh, staff members to the celebration. Try to surprise your honoree if at all possible. And we do have a checklist and a guide to presenting to make it easy for you to have that presentation and make it meaningful. And as Stephanie pointed out, going virtual for your presentation can be just as fun as having it in person. We have lots of our ambulatory settings that do virtual presentations. And then, believe it or not, it is possible to surprise that nurse where you tell them, oh, this is a mandatory meeting. We're going to be talking about HIPAA compliance or whatever, and they show up and all of a sudden you're reading this nomination and you surprise and everybody jumps out from behind a blackened screen, maybe their own family members or the patient family that nominated them can have a great impactful celebration. So whenever you have a chance and if you're interested, you can check out YouTube, for example, or just the intranet and look up DAISY Award presentations. It's so wonderful. There are so many recorded presentations out there now of how uh, facilities and programs are celebrating their nurses. So important that you register your nurse after the presentation. This allows them not only to have ongoing recognition because we create what we call a spotlight that looks just like this that lives always on our website, but it also allows them to be um, um, available for their honoree benefits, to be eligible for those benefits. 
And there are a lot of great benefits for DAISY honorees. Reduced tuition offer if they wish to further their education, apply or renew certification. Um, they can apply to Sigma under the leadership clause. And then we have some wonderful benefits such as the Healing Hands Nursing Conference Scholarship that's going on right now. So if you are a DAISY honoree or you know a DAISY honoree, they can apply for $2,000 to go to a conference of their choice. And Healing Hands, which is part of Charismatic, one of our industry partners, they give out 10 of these, $2,000 each every year. And the Can deadline you, is Friday. So if you know anybody, <laughs> they just have to write a short essay. Fine. Yeah, short essay, easy, easy application. That's right. And also going on right now, that's also ending this Friday, is, um, you know, nurses, I am so odd that uh, the idea for a nurse when they go on vacation is to go to a third world country in order to help more people. And that is truly the heart of so many of our nurses. And so Daisy really wants to be there to help support them financially as they continue their mission. And so we do have the Daisy Medical Mission Grants that nurse Daisy honorees can also apply for. And uh, as it was said earlier, using social media as a great way to really highlight the stories. There is a tendency in the media lately to be a little bit negative around the nursing crisis. Um, and there certainly is something to be said of a global pandemic and the aftermath and the effect it has had on the healthcare industry and on nurses. That being said, there is so much right that is happening, so many good things that are going on in the healthcare world. Shout them out, celebrate, use these stories to let everyone know that actually compassionate care is alive and well when um, a patient or family goes to your organization. Yeah, it's important to let your community know you've got a treasure trove of stories and examples of compassionate care and you extend it outside the walls of your facility, right? If they're there for the award presentation, the people there hear it, but you want other people to hear it, not only within your organization, but within your community as well. That's right. And you can certainly grow your meaningful recognition. So we always start with the direct care nurse, because again, that is who most, you know, impacted my family and why they created the DAISY Award. But that being said, there are a lot of leaders out there, whether in title or in their work that they do, that impacts patient family care indirectly. And so we have the DAISY Award for Extraordinary Nurse Leaders. As Stephanie pointed out, nurse led, but sometimes it takes a whole team, including non-nurses to do something really extraordinary for a patient or patient's family with the DAISY Team Award. Brand new, we have the DAISY Award in Ethics for those nurses who are making ethical decisions for the good of patient family care. Advancing health equity for those nurses who go out and impact the social determinants of health. And that is a wonderful way to recognize the works that they are doing in their community. We also have a DAISY Faculty Award and a DAISY Nursing Student Award for our academic institutions. And of course, the DAISY Lifetime Achievement Award for those nurses who have spent their lifetime being extraordinary. And we just wanna say thank you to AAACN for this opportunity. We are so proud to be your partner and to have this opportunity to talk a little bit about how the DAISY Award can be very successful in ambulatory settings.